Hey everybody, it's Sean Powers and it's been a minute. I feel like it's been a long time since I made a video. I just feel so out of sync with YouTube. Yes, we're doing a video on time synchronization. But before we do, we have to cover another couple things which don't really seem related to me, but we're talking about some system services that we need to configure. So we're gonna look at SSH and we're gonna look at uh, syslog really quick. And then we're gonna talk about network time synchronization, crony, and then some tools that we can use to synchronize our system. Oh, and this is a uh, section 173. We're gonna finish off the 1.0s today. Yay, it's about time. So the first thing we're gonna look at is SSH. Now, when I talk about SSH specifically, I mean the SSH daemon or the SSH server that is running on your system. If you have the SSH server installed, on your system. So we're gonna look at that. It has a little odd sort of configuration, the way it's named. So let, let me show you what I'm talking about. Now we're here on Ubuntu. It doesn't really matter what system you're on as long as you have SSH server installed or open SSH server as it's often called. Uh, if you go into the etc. SSH folder, you're going to see a whole bunch of files in here. Now you'll notice none of these files end with .conf like most Unix or Linux based configuration files. Uh, there is a config.d folder, but the specific file we're gonna look at is just called sshd underscore config. Again, very oddly named, but nonetheless, that's what it's called. Now this one, SSH config is for configuring the client. So like when you are running SSH to connect to a remote server, that's where the configuration is gonna be. But we're talking about system services. And so in this case, we're gonna look at sshd dot or underscore config. I almost said .conf. Uh, and if we look at that, I'm gonna be root. So sudo uh, vi sshd underscore config. There's some configuration stuff in here that you may or may not want to change. Now, I will point out something interesting. It includes all the files in sshd underscore config.d and all the files in there have to be named .conf, which is just for some reason amuses me. But nonetheless, this is the location where you would change things for incoming uh, SSH connections. Now, there's not a whole lot that you would probably change in here. Some of the things that you might are like permit root login. If you uncomment this and then restart the SSH service, this is going to allow the root user to log in. However, the prohibit password is here. And by default, what that means is you can't log in uh, over SSH using a password. So this would enable the root user to log in, but only if they have SSH keys set up. Now I do have probably, I'll probably remember to put a link, I'll probably forget. But uh, if you go on my YouTube channel, there's a, a whole playlist about SSH. And I talk about uh, that sort of a thing, like SSH keys and how that would work. But that's like an example of something you might change. So you'd make a change, uh, you'd save the file, and then you would either restart your computer or restart the uh, SSH server uh, system or the service, and it would be active. Now, another thing that we're going to look at before we go into like the time synchronization stuff is uh, syslog. Now, uh, syslog is, <sighs> okay, so let's talk about the elephant in the room. And that's basically that almost every modern Linux distribution now has system D doing pretty much everything as far as services and all that stuff goes. And it's no different with uh, syslog, like the way that log files are created. However, however, uh, it does kind of integrate with syslog so that you still get conventional text-based log files, even though systemd itself uses binary log files and you need to use journal CTL to look at those, uh, but that's not mentioned in this objective. So we're not gonna cover like journal CTL and systemd uh, formatted log files, uh, but just know that systemd has its hooks in there and it still will create some log files uh, using the traditional syslog stuff, which actually isn't even syslog. Now it's our syslog in almost every distribution, but I'll show you where those configuration things are, because again, this is about configuring the service and you still can configure syslog services, even if underneath it's often relying a lot on systemd. But we're still on the same system. Again, it, they're pretty much all the same in this regard. But if you go into var log, I think we've talked about this in, in other videos, like this is where most log files live, right? This is where, uh, you know, syslog itself lives. Uh, you'll see here, this is where everything goes to by default, but there is a configuration file that will split them up. You'll see there's a lot of different files in here. Not every single thing is dumped into the syslog file. So if you go into etc. 
r syslog d or r syslog dot d and look there's a uh, the one file that's going to have most of the configurations is going to be this 50 dash default.conf and this is just what i want to show you basically this is where it splits up incoming log stuff into multiple files and so here it says like mail is going to go into var log mail dot log and in, instead of just in the standard uh syslog file so this is where you would make changes to how things are logged what level things are logged all of that sort of thing this is where that configuration is is in the 50 dash default.conf inside the r syslog folder in the etc folder hopefully all that makes sense now there's stuff that we could go over but i don't want to go too deep into the weeds as far as syslog stuff goes and uh as far as log rotate, it's not even mentioned in the objectives because most of the log rotate stuff is actually handled by system D, go figure. Uh, however, it is important to understand what log rotate does, and that is it, it will like take a log file after a certain amount of time or a certain size, and it will truncate it. That's why you see like uh, something dot log dot one, something dot log dot two. Uh, it is important that you understand how that works. If you do stuff like set up Docker containers that might get long log files because system D is not going to manage those log files for you. So you may have to set up that log rotation or your hard drive might fill up on you. Uh, I actually do have a, a whole playlist on, on Docker stuff. And one of the things I talk about is, uh, configuring log rotate so that you don't fill up your hard drive. So you might want to check that out as well, but Let's get to time synchronization. Actually, I just peeked at my notes. We're not quite there yet. We have to talk about uh, locale CTL, which is honestly, it's just a command line tool that came with, guess what package it came with? Guess what package it came with? Yeah, systemd. Uh, so we're, we're back on Ubuntu here. I'm gonna clear this, actually let's do CD and then clear. Uh, what we can do is do locale CTL and it's going to, uh, you can do that or you can type locale CTL, I think status here, do the same thing, yeah. And it's going to show us the locale information, meaning like localization stuff, like how do numbers look? Do they have commas or or periods or what all those different things like do you have a dollar sign like if you're in the us or or whatever the symbol in other countries are for your currency uh this is the locale information but if you wanted to change this for whatever reason you could also use the locale ctl command to change the locale for your system uh first of all we can see the available locales so we could type locale ctl uh, i think it's uh show no list list locales and it's going to list all the available locales that are installed on our system and so we have uh here these are the ones that we have now this is going to be important for certain packages like for example if you do postgres uh, databases they're really big on what the system locale is and if you don't have it set to the proper thing and then you change it, the existing databases might have issues. So it is important to set this up. It's usually set up when you install the system, but nonetheless, it is an important thing to look at. And so this is how you would set it. You would just do as root sudo locale ctl set locale and then like lang for language equals, uh, we're gonna do, well, it's already set to this, but maybe it'll give us an error. Uh, underscore capital us dot utf dash eight and so there i i set i set my locale to that i could have set it to something different and then set it back but if we do locale ctl we're going to see that is what it's set to so that's how you set the locale on a system but now now for real we can do uh time stuff and there are three basic uh ways that uh Linux system will keep its clock synchronized to the rest of the world. Now, the oldest one is just NTPD, Network Time Protocol Daemon, and that uses the NTP protocol. Well, that's redundant. Network Time Protocol protocol. Anyway, it uses that protocol to communicate with remote servers, and it can do multiple ones, and it like uh, checks for like staggered time, and it just keeps it very, very accurate. Um, there's also a, a newer a program called Crony, and Crony has a server and a client all in the same package and they work together. Uh, but the difference there is, uh, well, it's it's just like NTP. It's a rewrite from scratch of NTPD, uh, but it has better, it's just better, right? It, it does better synchronization. It does faster synchronization with time stuff, but there's also the most common one, which comes with systemd, 
<laughs> and it's called systemd timesyncd and this comes like on default with Ubuntu and a lot of other distributions. And the difference here is it doesn't have a server component to it. It, it doesn't uh, like allow other computers to sync up with it. And it won't go to multiple places and like find the difference in like how long it took for, uh, you know, the ping or the time to travel and, and do all this crazy stuff. It will just get a time from a server and set its local time to match that. It's uh, very simplistic. It's usually all you need, uh, but if you need something more precise, you'll want to install one of the daemons, either Crony or NTPD. Uh, in true system D fashion, it's kind of, integrated in the system in a really bizarre way, depending on the distribution you're on. So we're going to look at three different distributions because we have three different tools. The first one we're going to look at is an Ubuntu stock out of the box so you can see what that looks like. Now, regardless of the distribution, they're all going to use the tool time date CTL in order to uh, show you how the system is synchronized sort of thing. And of course, time date CTL count comes with system D, but everything uses that now. And just like with locale CTL, if you press enter, it's going to show you the information. You could also uh, type status, but it shows you the status if you don't give it another command. So that's the default. Uh, but basically what we have here, uh, it shows the, the local time, universal time, uh, the RTC, real time clock time, and then what our current time zone is. We can set the time zone using this. I'm not gonna go into that. It's just like setting the locale. Uh, you'll just like list the time zones and you can set the time zone doing that. Or you can use like TZ config on your system. So there's lots of ways to do it, but that is one thing you can do with time date CTL. The, the program is manage the time zone, but it shows us that our system clock is synchronized and that NTP service is active. However, it doesn't mean NTPD, the daemon. It means it's using, uh, you know, an, an online, and it's actually using SNTP, uh, which is a simple NTP thing that has the client only installed. And we can check that if you want, just by doing like PSAUX and then grep for time sync. And it's going to show us, oh, sure enough, we have a system D time sync dink. D. That's the thing that's installed by default. It's keeping our system up and running. That's cool. Now we can control the, a couple things with this. We could say uh, time date CTL set NTP off. And what that's going to do is it's going to turn off this time synchronization daemon. So if we do time CTL now, it's going to show us that the NTP service is inactive. Our, our system clock is still synchronized because like it, it just has, you know, it's running. So it hasn't like gone out of sync all of a sudden, but it's an inactive service. So it's not currently being synced. And the interesting thing is it actually does system D commands behind the scene to disable that time sync daemon in the background. So if we do that PS AUX and then grep for time sync again, it's not running. And so we can set that. We want that back on, right? You want your system to stay in sync. And so time date CTL set NTP, even though we're not using NTPD, it's not the daemon. It's talking about the protocol here. So set NTP on, and it's going to use the, the daemon that it is configured to use, which happens to be uh, system D dash time sync D. So we do that grip there. It's running again. Okay. Now, if you are do, using time sync D, there's one more cool thing we can do time date CTL time sync dash status. So not just status, but time sync dash status. And this is going to show us what server it's connecting to, how often it pulls and just information about the offset and all that sort of stuff. So you can get information if you're using the system D based time sync D that's Ubuntu out of the box, how it normally goes, goes. If you need something more precise, you can install NTPD or Crony. Uh, if we we're going to go to Red Hat though, and by default, Red Hat does not use time sync D it uses Crony like out of the box. That's what it uses. And so, uh, we're going to look at that now, if I can switch over, boom. Okay. So here we are. This is uh, Rocky Linux here. Let me move my face here. See Rocky Linux running it. So it's just like Red Hat. And here we have the same command. We have time date CTL. And we're going to see that the system clock is synchronized. It says NTP service is active. Oh, cool. That's awesome. However, if we do this PSAUX grep time sync, whoa, there's no time sync daemon running. That's because Red Hat is using Crony behind the scenes, but uh, time date CTL integrates with Crony, even though it's not its, its own native system D based time 
synchronization thing, it still integrates with Crony. So we could still do um, time date CTL set NTP off. And now if we do the time date CTL, we're going to see that NTP service is now inactive. But what it deactivated is Crony, not time sync D. Uh, and so, in fact, let's let's reactivate it. So I can grep and show you. So I turned it back on. It, it started that system D service for Crony, and we can do PSAUX and grep for Cron this time. And sure enough, Crony D is running, and that's how it is keeping up with the system. So, so that's really the difference between like an Ubuntu system running the standard default client only uh, time sync D and Red Hat, which installs a crony, which is a client and server uh, that is a little more precise, but works pretty much the same way. Now, it, just because I like to be uh, clear and upfront with you, it isn't always uh, as simple as this nice smooth integration with time date CTL and crony, for example, all right, so Big Tuna, this is actually just the computer that we're recording on. This is my desktop workstation. It's running Debian, and I do, I mean, Debian runs system D, but I have time date CTL here as well. And you'll see that time is synchronized, yes, but it says NTP service instead of active or inactive, it says not any. And that's because it, it is not in control of or has any integration with the underlying uh, system that is keeping my my system in time and that's because I'm using NTPD on the server and we can we can do that or check that by uh, doing PSAUX and we'll grep for NTP and we're going to see sure enough here I have NTP uh, running this is the NTP daemon that's what's keeping my system uh, going unfortunately there's not that direct integration like there is in Red Hat with uh, Crony so if we do something like uh time date ctl set ntp off it's going to be like uh no it's not supported so it's important to un to know what's going on behind the scenes because sometimes the the one simple command to rule them all like time date ctl is not going to be able to control your underlying uh, daemon depending on what you're running and so if you need to configure crony or ntp it's going to be in the etc folder just like other things to configure like what servers you're connecting to and that sort of a thing but the biggest takeaway is understanding that there are basically three different synchronization programs that might be running on your system it could be just the built-in system d time sync d or it could be crony if you're in a red hat based system or it might be ntpd so uh time date ctl will show you if your system clock is up to date uh, and you may or may not be able to use that to configure the actual uh time servers now you can set the date and time with it but there's other tools that we've talked about to set the date and time as well but again systemd often comes with its own set of tools to do the same thing you can do with other stuff so anyway hopefully that's helpful uh, you can play with your system you can install any any uh, daemon that you want to keep track of your time generally what they come with by default is fine for most server situations you know you don't have to have like hundredths of a second precision for most applications uh, but if you do you're going to want to install something like crony because it is better at maintaining that perfect time on your system anyway thank you for tuning in thank you for your patience it's been so long it's about time i made a video <laughs> anyway, uh, remember to learn everything, do what you love, and most importantly, be kind. Thank you to everyone and all my Patreon supporters who I forgot to scroll, but pretend they're scrolling here. They're, oh, aren't they so nice? Oh, you, oh, oh, look, oh, that person is amazing. I, I'm horrible. I'll see you next time.